past it. No. But no. blessings. No. Blessings. You get, you, get, you get what I'm saying, basically. You get what I'm saying. It's warfare. It's not just physical warfare. It's psychological warfare. And they want our children. And they've got most of our children. So blessings. And I'd like to thank everybody for coming. One more. Bless. Hey, Frederick. Right. Yo. Hey, yo, you can't do that. I want to thank... Wow. You can't do it all the time, no. I want to thank Bravo Holo from the National African People's Caribbean Organization. Am I going to lie, Bravo? Okay. I want to thank, bro, let me just say, my name's Pinker from the United Friends and Families campaign. I'm also involved within the African People's Liberation Organization. And I'm also involved with a Saturday school and the legal surgery in which we're trying to get on the ground at the moment that will give our young people particularly legal support when they fall prey to the victims of the society in which that they're living in. But first and foremost, I just want to thank my brother Olu. Because Baba Hulu ran me in the early hours of the morning. And anybody that knows me knows so that I've not really hit for too much of the internet. And he said, did you hear the verdict about this cinema? And I said, no, I don't know. He said the dirty beast got off with the murder of your young brother, Trayvon. And he said, more than that, he said, we got, he said, we got a call of organization. I said, brother, whatever it is that you do, you know that you've got my support 100%. But do please reach out to us, your forces. Well, the time has come out. I just say a few little handful of people. But with that confidence, he, he reached out. And so I want to thank each and every one of you also who took the time to come out here today with such short notice. I want you to give yourself a, a, a big hand, brothers and sisters, because we should underestimate. We should underestimate our presence here today because one of the problems our people today is that we've got a custom to be brutalized. We've got a custom to just be abused. We've got a custom for us to just to be murdered. And even so, so much I was speaking to some of our activist friends and they said to me that Minka, I'm a surprise about that verdict. And I took exception to that comment. Well, I have to exceptions to them saying I'm not surprised. And the reason why I took exception to it, it's almost as if to say that we, as a working class, is powerless. It's almost as if to say that people forgot that when this murderer killed this young man, their parents didn't want to do anything. And it was through the mobilization mostly of the working class, the force that forced them to make the decision of putting this killer on trial. So I don't want us to ever underestimate our power. There are certain things, however, that took place within this trial that concerned me. And what? One of the things that concerned me, and it comes back to the point that I raised about us developing a legal surgery, I don't know the hell. How could somebody be defending a family turn around and say that this ain't got nothing to do with racism? I gotta ask myself, which side are you on? How could you be defending a family who was a family whose son was clearly been victim of the most gross stereotyping? of how a criminal is that's been presented by the American media rather than those three-piece men, white men predominantly in suits 
us as the criminals they turn the upside down to make out a young black man as a hoodie is the biggest criminal walking the planet. And if you're uncertain about that, you just have to look at the statistics, which is not just about our young brother Trayvon, if you want to talk about the racism. 50% of our jobs in America is full up with the stereotyping of our young men predominantly by the system. And so, when I hear comments like that, I know that I ain't got a Johnny Cochran up there defending them. Because when Johnny Cochran, no matter what you may want to think about O.J. Simpson, Johnny Cochran was able to link up his lynching with the genocide which is taking place amongst African people that's been going on since our enslavement and capture, which I like what a lot of people think has ended, it still continues today. And so, when I look at that situation, I am surprised. I'm also disappointed. Because what happens in many of these cases is that we, we develop our resistance. And then it gets to a point where they put it over to the lawyers and say, let them take it over. And that's a big mistake. And we've got to redouble our efforts to make sure that care is brought to justice. But the justice is not just for Trevor's family. It's got to be a justice for all African and oppressed people who are facing the tyranny of the white American state. And when I say that, people would have don't, I don't have to tell you about that sellout Uncle Tom, Barack Obama. I don't have to tell you nothing about that. But it's important that we identify the system he represents and not just to see the imprisonment or the killing of Zimmerman as a solution. The solution has got to be the overthrow of that system. The, the solution has got to be those killer fucks that's walking up our street has got to be accountable to us. And this is not just in America. We're talking about over here as well. I mentioned I'm involved in a campaign called the United Friends and Families Campaign. One of our families, Derek Bennett, running away from the police, showing the back six times, and the argument of the police in the court was that this was self-defense. So we don't have to look for America for the injustice. But also, when I bring to your attention, has anyone with me? Has anyone with me again? With a young black man. Police from killing him for over three months. Could have arrested him at any time. Decided to what, carry out what they call a hard stop. But those people happen to the inquiry of this man called bloody execution. This is not in America, this is right here. So this demand and the struggle for justice is something which we have got to see as something which has a direct impact on our lives. We know when the American imperialist system is weakened, we are strengthened. We know when we make links of our brothers over there, we are strengthened over here. And so I want to conclude, brothers and sisters, because I mentioned about the United Friends and Families campaign. This is a campaign of families that looks at, that support families whose loved ones, and you would have heard our beautiful chair, our sister Marcia has been earlier on today. But we look at those who have been killed in prisons, the psychiatric systems, and by the police. But I'm of the feeling now that we need a campaign that's got to go beyond that. It's not to say that that campaign is not valid, it's very much valid. But we've got to have a campaign that is even more broader than that. And it's for that reason why I'm happy to be here to now to introduce a brother. A brother which will be coming short. Well, I'll say, it, brother, if you don't want to say. I'll say. It. We want to introduce a brother in which now we've got a link up with the wider campaign. Because I come to this picket here today late. 
And one of the reasons why we came to this picket link is because I just came out of a court today in which we saw the kind of justice that Trevon Martin family saw. With the overwhelming evidence in that court, the judge still decided that he was going to find against the defendant. Now that court was filled out with our people. Was filled out. And that was important. But what this shows is that we don't just need to have people inside of the court, we're going to need to have people outside of the court and make sure that nothing goes by. So we're going to talk about a movement of civil disobedience. A movement that don't just focus on the so-called law, but recognize that the law is working in the interest of a few and not for our benefit. And if we're going to turn it upside down, we're going to have to have the equivalent power or stronger power. And the power is within us. I'm going to end with just one chant. And I just want to say it's not about Zimmerman. It's about what this government of America represented by Barack Obama is carrying on. I want to say that the attack which has taken place on the day-to-day -day levels of African people must be identified within the government of America. We must identify this, this attack as the part of the ongoing genocide against African people, in particularly in America. And so I end with the chant, as I always end with the chant, which is, Barack Obama, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. Barack Obama, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. Barack Obama, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Ask yourself, what do you want the past to be cleared for? Do you know? Ask 
Hello everyone, it's very good to have you all here. It's so nice to see so many young people out here supporting this cause. Um, I'm really, really glad to see you all. It's, um, it's a great injustice that has been done to our brother Trevor and this is an injustice that continues to go on throughout the world. And this is something we can no longer sit back and accept as the norm. We have to do something. We cannot sit back and wait on the lawmakers to do this because it is, this is their decision to see that we are not looked for with justice. So we need to make sure we get what we want. It's not a question of you know, are we going to get it? I know there's a lot of feeling out there amongst the young people that, oh, there is nothing we can do about it. But if you bet, there's a lot we can do about it. But just by sitting back and talking about it, it's not going to happen. We have to get up. We have to get active. And that's the only way that we're going to make sure we get the justice we deserve. We deserve justice. You know, we are no longer accepting the animalistic behavior of the authorities. Because, you know, we are not animals. We're human beings. We are human beings. And we will no longer accept the animalistic behavior of these people. And this is why I'm out here campaigning for my son, Jason. Because the brutality that the authority has dished out to him is unjust, is uncalled for, and yet still they can justify it because he looks suspicious. What does suspicious look like? He wasn't even wearing a hood, please. He's just going about his own business, but they choose to pick on him because why? They think they can get away with it, and there's nothing to it but that. They just feel they can get away with it, and the cruelty that they went about beating him. It's inhuman. I mean, in this country, we're not allowed to beat horses, dogs, or any animal. So how is it possible that they can go about beating our young men? How is that possible? How come we're sitting back and accepting this? We'll have to make our own laws. We know we do not accept brutality. We do not accept it. Do your job and do it well. You're there to protect us. And this is what we want. We're not paying them to beat us up. We're not paying them to kill us. You know, this is just not the way civilized people behave. We want civilized people to behave like they are civilized. And civilized mean to behave just in the eyes of the law. This is what the law is there for. And if the law cannot, if they cannot do the job, then they need to be replaced. Let someone who can do the job, do the job and do it well. And I think we all need to get on board and make and change the law. We need to change the law. There is no other way around it. The law that is there is not for us. The law that is there is not protecting us. So we need to change it. Yes. And how are we going to do this? We can't just sit back and think, oh, we have no say in the matter. We have a lot to say in the matter. So everyone that is here, I wish they will get on board and don't just sit back and think, oh, the law is going to do what the law is going to do. No. The people are going to make the law, they're going to change the law, and this is what we're out here to do. Make sure the law is changed. Make sure when they see us, they see a human being. They don't see an animal, okay? This is the purpose of this demonstration. Whether it be here in England, whether it be here in America, wherever it is that they're dealing with us in the world. They must deal with us as human beings, with feelings, okay? And this is what I want you all to get on board with. On the 25th of this month, my son Jason is up in court 
charged with obstructing the police. Well, let me tell you something. He didn't obstruct them. They obstruct him. But yes, then he is charged with obstructing them. So, I would like all of you to make it a date in your diary to come down and give support at the Campbell Magistrate Court on the 25th. And this is at 9.30. I know there's a lot of obstacles in our way with this, doing that, doing but if something is as important as this, then we have to make time for it. So I thank you all in advance. And thank you all very Brother Minka and uh, greetings one and all. I'm really surprised by the turnout here today when I received the notice of this on Facebook I think it was.